Telcos have been strengthening their ties with the public cloud giants during the past 12 to 18 months. But what does this trend mean to companies such as VMware? Well, to find out, I'm talking with Stephen Spellacy, VP of Service Provider Marketing at VMware. So Stephen, great to talk to you again. Thanks for joining us. Um, now, moving communication service provider workloads to the cloud has been a topic of discussion for several years, and it comes with many pros and cons. Uh, what's your view on the drivers that are leading telcos to embrace the hyperscalers? Well, Ray, there's been a huge focus, obviously, on the migration from 4G to 5G. And it's really new thinking, right? You know, 4G, if you think about it, it was largely a moment for uh, operators to embrace, uh, you know, network virtualization and, you know, virtualized network functions. And 5G is really about the move to a cloud native and containerized network function approach. Um, and as well as the network equipment providers and the ISVs in the space, are, they're going through a very painful and kind, you know, kind of expensive process of converting their legacy VNFs to CNFs and moving in that direction to cloud native. You know, as um, as CSPs look at the opportunity, they are also looking at new monetization uh, capabilities, and you know what they're going to be able to do with that is bring services more readily to market. They also can reduce the lag time you know, between the time it takes to build out the new infrastructure to deliver those new services. Um, you know, furthermore, once they have that, they can monetize the services by tapping into the marketplaces that exist at the hyperscaler, right? So they can dr they can actually bring more things to market faster as well they can tap into a viable marketplace of services and applications. You know, additionally, they can also grow that infrastructure footprint in capacity on demand, basically in near real time. And they can do this without having to, you know, further forecast growth. They can almost, um, if you will, predict or proactively address those capacity uh, concerns on demand. You know, and also I'd say lastly, CSPs are thinking a lot about modernizing that infrastructure as they make that move from four to five. Um, and you know, it's for them, it's about moving to a more just-in-time model, thinking through, you know, kind of beyond the pandemic about how they plan and operate their networks. And they're also shifting their models to embrace more of an OPEX-oriented business model versus a traditional CAPEX model. And this has to be a requirement moving forward in order to handle, if you will, the growth that's expected from 5G and the new business services that they will offer. Okay, so in many ways, these relationships sound like a bit of a no-brainer for the network operators. So what challenges slow down CSPs in their adoption of a public cloud strategy? Well, it's not all a walk in the park. Um, it's not as easy as one, two, three. So, you know, as CSPs look to adopt hyperscalers, they should be thinking about this in sort of the viewpoint or vantage point of using the hyperscaler to augment their current capabilities. You know, the approach doesn't need to be mutually exclusive. It's not all or nothing. Hyperscalers do have unique skill sets and capabilities that CSPs can leverage right now to augment what they do well today. Um, but it's important to understand that not all clouds are created equally. You know, there's a variety of differences between the cloud's hyperscaler choices related to APIs and different strengths from a regional perspective. And of course, operational inconsistencies exist from the network perspective, as networks are very siloed in nature from core to edge to RAN from an architectural perspective. So different use cases need to be supported across that network and across those dimensions. And then, you know, the other piece is cost. So as the scale increases and you start to use more cloud, you need to think about ingress and egress costs for things like the user plane function. And then growth, obviously, of your future network and the, if you will, monetization strategy needs to be tied to that right hyperscaler as well. So depending on the hyperscaler of choice, they may or may not have a strength, say, in the enterprise, which is a key driver for what CSPs want to do around 5G services. And then they have to operationally think through how do they use this new technology and approach in, in that, you know, their environment is very siloed by segmentation in their network, as well as operationally siloed. And they need to think that through. Where is the best strategy with, you know, the various hyperscalers? What do they have to offer to them? And how will that be a fit for them in their business model today? Now, you're announcing VMware Telco Cloud Platform for public cloud today. Uh, tell us how it can help CSPs to leverage public cloud infrastructure. 
Well, right in the in the development of this new product, we worked with some strategic customers and partners to evolve our existing platform to support this high, the hyperscaler option, if you will. Um, the approach is akin to you know rethinking how we architect the telco network itself, but doing that on a public cloud. We didn't do this in isolation. In fact, we worked with strategic CSP customers who are very uh, visionary in their thinking. So for the product itself, um, VMware's Telco Cloud Platform for Public Cloud or TCP for Public Cloud, uh, it allows our service provider customers really to extend what they have built on-premise into, if you will, the public cloud. And it consists of all the same components, technically, our underlying uh, product suite of capabilities like vSphere, vSAN, NSX, Tanzu, and our Telco Cloud Automation or TCA product. We extend this, if you will, to a public cloud experience. Um, VMware's TCP for public cloud is integrating tightly with um, a core architectural enhancement, something we call VMware Cloud on AWS. This is the first, if you will, entree into the space. We're working with Amazon's AWS as the first platform to support in the cloud. And we're extending that, that TCP footprint um, in the cloud from core to edge to RAN and doing this across public cloud to serve a, a variety of CSPs across the globe. Now the product itself provides the same kind of consistent horizontal infrastructure experience and that multi-layer automation capability. And we're bringing that to the hyperscaler environment. And we're creating in effect multi-cloud uh, capabilities which are consistent with the operation of the service provider today. This is gonna allow them to realize their multi-cloud vision and really apply this as a core part of their strategy. Now, the last thing I wanna mention is the new product introduces a new pay as you grow concept for our Telco Cloud platform. We do this on public cloud, which is akin to the business model. And you know, in addition to these you know, existing models that already exist, we do perpetual and term-based pricing, et cetera. This new pay as you grow concept allows them to effectively grow their investment in public cloud as they need it, as they see it. It opens up new proc uh, procurement choices to the service providers that really tightly align with their business plans and their growth plans. And what benefits will this new product bring to telcos? Well, there are a myriad number of, uh, of benefits. Um, obviously, they can start to really fully realize this multi-cloud hybrid architecture um, from the on-prem implementation to say hyperscaler number one, which in this case is AWS, in the future, Hyperscaler 2 and 3, et cetera. It allows them to right size and right place where they want to put their network functions more efficiently and more appropriately. It also gives them the ability to have that single operational model that will allow them to span the entire network, which will ultimately enable them to lower their total cost of ownership overall. Now, See, with this option, CSPs can pick cloud supporting also a regional footprint from a privacy and data sovereignty perspective without having to redo any of their technical decision making as it relates to where they place their workloads. This multi-cloud strategy allows them to be more acute and more precise in how they architect their networks and support, if you will, these very sensitive and critical requirements. And then in addition to this, instead of worrying about whether or not an ISV or a NEPS software will work on a given cloud, if it runs on TCP public cloud, it's gonna run on any cloud that VMware supports. And are there any benefits for software vendors, the ISVs, or the network equipment vendors? Uh, and how are hyperscalers looking at this? Well, actually for the network function ISVs and the NEPS out there that are working with VMware, with our programs such as the Ready for Telco program, um, it's the inverse of the CSP story that I just went through. They gain a higher level of confidence that anything that they bring to the network that runs on our platform, say on-prem, will also work in the cloud. We're starting this effort here with AWS, but we'll be attacking the other hyperscaler platforms from a roadmap perspective over time. We also remove barriers to entry for the NEPs and the ISVs themselves and enable to leverage new hyperscalers. So as they become immediately available to run on our platform, they can run on any of the supported hyperscalers. Nothing has to change in their code once it's supported on TCP for public cloud. This is a great efficiency, not only for the NEPs and the ISVs, but for our telco customer themselves, the CSP. And then lastly, for the hyperscaler, well, they benefit from a lower bar to entry for their customer, the CSP, to migrate, if you will, from on-premise to the cloud 
This will help them increase consumption, make their hyperscaler offer more sticky, which is in general goodness all the way up across the board for not only the hyperscaler, the NEP and ISV, but of course for the CSP. Okay, well, that's a, a very positive note to end on, Stephen. Great to talk to you again. Thanks very much for joining us today. Thanks, Ray. It's been a pleasure.